Hello, and welcome back to Hero Rise, the Hero Project by Zachary Sergi. I will be your host from Lonely Man Studios today. And thank you for, if you had watched the previous video for the second chapter for this series. It's going to be chapter two of Surviving Idols. Uh, if you haven't seen the last video, I recommend you go watch it. Or if you haven't seen the last uh, prior game to this, um, with a little bit more context involved, by all means. Um, if not, welcome here, and let's get started. Looking at the massive sign, you can't help but feel a tingle of excitement as you prepare yourself. You try to remember the perfect storm of events that led to the creation of the Hero Project. After the rise in anti-powered sentiment, the American government decided it was time to create the first ever American Protectorate a confederation of heroes meant to guard sectors of the nation and come together for big missions regarding national security. America has never had an national level powered team before. A venture of that scale always proved to be too expensive or was out of step with the government. But this will be the first national team backed with near limitless government funds and coordinated with a mission control linked to the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, and the DRPR. America saved itself from a fate as a declining world power once by harnessing powered resources. So it's clear that keeping powered heroes at the cultural forefront is crucial for maintaining the nation's relevance. To populate the American Protectorate, the government then greenlit the Hero Project, a reality show intended to conduct a national search to find the right heroes for the job. It may be unconventional, but there's no denying the power of reality 3V, the common term for now standard 3D TV. Plus, forming this team on 3V is a sure way to guarantee the public's support since they'll eventually have a, hard, a hand in choosing which heroes make the American Protectorate. If the Hero Project has its way, the show will be the next rating smash. And even if it isn't, the winners are slated to become a part of the Hero Venture that will, that will make the Millennial Group look like a preschool play date. So, as you're looking for the next big move in your career, Jenny told you about the Hero Project which will base its national headquarters in Millennia City and the powered capital of the nation, if not the world. You both agreed this was not an opportunity to be missed, but how do you feel about potentially being part of a reality show? Um, It's a means to an end. The show grants you the opportunity to be a part of the most exciting heroic adventure in the nation, and that's the only reason you're here. For better or worse, this is the next big thing in power to heroics, and you aim to stay on the cutting edge no matter what. You become infamous in Millennia City, but this is a chance to take your career to the national level, a feat very few heroes have ever accomplished. 44. Alright, so nothing went weird yet. Team player. I think it's all the same still. Just checking there, because I think it's a little bit different than what, I'm, than what I would usually say. Because I don't usually... On the first game, I didn't focus on politics. I just wanted to do what was right. And that, that did me pretty well. Um, so I was looking at that again. I was like, I wonder if that was not the turn that I wanted it to do. It's a means to an end in order for me to do better things in the world. That's how I saw that. So when it said that, it was like, oh, that's not what I thought it was going to be. But okay. Um, starting under the sign, you can't believe your eyes. The Hero Project has built a sprawling complex the size of a mall, intended to be a stadium, headquarters, and living spaces all in one. The compound certainly gave the Millennial Group Tower a run for its money. Floating to the ground with Jenny, you find yourself unable to stop staring at... Another hero in the general casting line who happens to be a very cute girl wearing a skin-tight red costume. Something about her looks so familiar. Stop drooling, dunce, Jenny says, and follow me. <laughs> There's a separate sign-up for established names. 
<laughs> and how do you know that, you ask, thinking this, uh, that some of the faces you recognize in the general casting line are pretty established themselves. I have a client enrolling. She's in the category. Or did you think I just came here to support little old you? Before you can respond, Jenny spots something across the lot. Actually, gotta run, darling. Knock him dead. Okay. Wait, you were supposed to... But Jenny is already gone. She was supposed to walk you through the sign-up process, but it looks like you'll have to handle it yourself. Uh... Go back outside to the end of the general cast. <laughs> I'm going to the VIP then. <sighs> Turning around, you walk forward with purpose, making it look like you know exactly where you're headed. Thankfully, a few long corridors later, you see a table set up with the large golden letters that read VIP. Hi, I'm here for the VIP sign up, you say, with as much authority as you can muster. The casting producer glances up at you, then quickly away. I'm sorry, I don't know who you are she says but there's a separate sign up for gene hazards <gasps> what did you just say you are a mm. you're a big c word that's what you are you lady sashimi you saucy minx oh, diva 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 come on you hear the voice and have no idea where to place it you spin around but don't see anyone tally ho down here you look down to find an enormous man in a hot pink people mover. Why is he sounds familiar, but I don't know. Uh, Five hundred pounds. You immediately wonder if it's a side effect that's some bizarre power set. Your second thought is that you've never met this man. And he's calling you by your last name. I must say, I'm a huge fan. He says, spinning his chair. I've been following the whole salacious story like an aged soap addict, scurrying along now. Scurry along. The man motors away at a surprising clip, people clearing out of his way as he rolls. You leave to half run just to keep up. Sorry if any of your folks weren't treating you spikily as spam. Can't expect everyone to love the news you. Love the new you. Well, you've come to the right man. I'm Gigi. Well, you can call me executive producer Gigi. I simply adore the new costume. By the way, now we are traversing. What's your angle going to be? Excuse me? What's your strategy? Going in the show for my lucky charm. Are you going to be a hero or a villain? Loyal or a floater? A leader or under the radar? Best decide now before the tough get going, chicken little. It's a good question, one you spent some time working on before you came here. You think your best bet is to be a loyal ally and team player? Um... Loyal ally and team player. Whatever the format of the show might be, you know you probably won't be able to win it all on your own, which is true. Besides, the winners will have to work together on the American Protectorate, so you need to prove that you can work well with the other heroes. Oh, I haven't really decided... Oh, no. Ow, I haven't really... <laughs> you say, to GG. Not sure you can trust yet, especially when it comes to producers. Plus... You have to see how you really want to behave when the time comes. You know what they say about the best laid plans. Was that the game's way of screwing me over right now? Okay. Whatever you decide, you know that remaining consistent with your strategy is important. You will probably be rewarded for making choices that reinforce the same strategic direction. Well... There's plenty of time to sort it all out. As you know, it's working or not. If you make it on the show, we had you start your ME chip show stats screen regarding your archetypes. Now, his or love, you are the one. You're all that jazz. You have the thumb here on the dotted line. Still moving, Gigi holds a hollow contract over his soldier. Shoulder. 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 He over his shoulder. Hand it to him, son of a bitch. Shoulder. A contract the size of a... No oh, my God. Eh, the contract is non-negotiable or quite standard. Save us all the time we're pretending to read it and just, like, just get on, shall we? You look down at the hollow contract knowing you should review it, but you also know that whatever might be in there, you're going to end up thumbing it anyway. This better be worth it, you think, as you reach out your thumb. 
You follow Gigi behind a roped-off section with two hippo bouncers lifted, lift as you approach. Oh, and one last thing, Gigi adds. Now that you're all official, we've been leaving your legend level at the door. We'll be recalibrating all contestants. Levels to a national scale to even the playing field, so to speak. You're not really sure you want to know what that means, but you open the hero license and check your legend level anyway. You scroll down and see that once you're... Your legend level will drop to 20. Does it go back up if I don't get it? You close your license and move on because you know you'll build your legacy back up just like you did before. So what does GG stand for, you asked, wanted to keep him interested in you as long as possible? That's for me to know and you to salivate over, my dear dumpling, GG says. Now I'm afraid I mustn't dally. There's, there's much to be done, but for now, you're, you're on the VIP casting line. So wait here until you're called. I got my eyes on you. Don't prove me wrong, eh? With that, <laughs> I don't know how I changed his voice like three different freaking times. I figured I'd go keep that one, though, for him. That sounded pretty fun for him. <laughs> With that, GG spins away and rolls up the giant... Teenage turtle with pigtails. Oh, rolls up two, not rolls up a. Eh? <laughs> okay. You, <laughs> you turn to look around and find it's already packed. You have no idea what this casting process is going to be like, but you definitely know the competition is going to be insane. You recognize some of MC's most famous faces, including a few you know personally. You scan the room and notice there are also several camera orbs floating, capturing footage. You're already on the record, which means everything you say and do will subject to eventual public scrutiny. If you're lucky, that is, you'll notice that none of the cameras seem to be clamoring to film you just yet. Still, every decision you make from here on out is going to be carefully judged and weighed. Basically, you need to start playing this game from the moment you walk in the door. Also, your girlfriend, Black Magic, you still can't believe you get to say that, is supposed to be out of the country right now on the Millennial Group mission and was supposed to call you the moment she got back. So why is she standing across the VIP room right now? Unfortunately, you have a sneaking suspicion you know why. Even though you decided to become an exclusive couple, Black Magic made you promise to keep the relationship a secret from the press. A decision you still don't know how you feel about. Taking a deep breath and made a quick decision, you step forward to talk to... No, not the jury. Fumble the stage show. No. I want to I wanna go talk to her. You walk towards Black Magic, and she does a double-take spot on you. Her eyes flicker to a camera orb floating nearby, and then back to you. She smiles and pulls you over to the side of the room. I'm so sorry I didn't call. I literally got off Millennial Jet and walked right in here. Welcome to the VIP room, rookie, Black Magic says, nudging you on the shoulder and hitting you with a devastating smile. You try not to melt. She could really look, she couldn't look more like Mary Lou. Just then, a camera orb swivels next to you and Black Magic tenses. She had asked if you could keep your relationship under wraps for as long as possible so you could give it a shot without the public breathing down your neck. You've respected her wishes until now, but it might be the perfect time to reveal your relationship. Um, keep in good standing with her for right now. You say the words and Black Magic sets her eyes on you, then out of nowhere she kisses you. Hey, there we go. You're caught off guard, your mind reeling. What does this mean? But then you can feel Black Magic's hands on your back and you forget all about the other room of heroes and cameras. She can have that effect on you. When she is done, Black Magic hits you with a grin and she says, Whoops. Well, that's one to make sure you get some quality camera time. Hey, it went up by one. Nice. Just then, a loudspeaker crackles life somewhere in the room. Dunce, please report to the interview station. Well, that didn't take long. Fifteen minutes later, you find yourself sitting in an interview room, fully microphoned, and staring into a set of floating cameras. You thought the producer who set you up would be interviewing you, but he left the room a few minutes ago without instruction. Now you're starting to wonder if this is some kind of test. Should you be talking about yourself or something? But the door swings open and a familiar face appears, Rexford Schillers. Well, if it isn't my favorite dunce, he says, sitting in a chair across you, here to ruin another one of my ventures. Mm. 
Rexford Schillers is MC's wealthiest playboy and was a major part of your first case as a powered hero. He's a collector of ancient artifacts, and when his crown jewel, the Gravitus, was stolen, you tried to recover it and the hefty reward that came with it. Unfortunately, Prodigal ruined that mission and destroyed the Gravitus, leaving Rexford to blame you for the loss of this priceless artifact. Needless to say, he's not your biggest fan. Why are you here, you ask warily. You're really intent on digging yourself a nice hole, aren't you, Rexford says, across his legs. Haven't you heard? This is my show, and my budding team. The government has selected me to be on the Hero Project showrunner and the American Protectorate Future CEO. Since I'm Millennia City's most notable support of all things powered and a rather sizable co-investor. Of course, do you know what that means? You nod, but Rexford goes on anyway. That means that what I say here goes. I'm judge, jury, and executioner when it comes to the Hero Project. Rexford pauses, wanting to enjoy this moment as much as possible. Then he stands up, straining his tie as he heads towards the door. I'm afraid there's just no room for imposter hacks on the Hero Project. Thanks for coming in, though. Your footage will make for some nice cannon fodder reel. Rexford is almost out the door, which means you have one shot to get yourself on this show. Uh, ask for a chance to prove myself as hero. Suck up. I'm not going to be a fan of this. I'm not going to be a fan of this. I can't curse. I need onto the show. And will my Discord freaking stop? <laughs> Ask for a chance to prove myself. It's time to survive. I'm about ready to mute my gosh dang computer if they keep going. I need to stop. Suck it up. Rexford. I've only ever wanted to impress you. You're MC's biggest star, and I only want the chance to show you what I can really do. Rexford turns to you, a smile plastered across his face, but he just stares through you. Just then, Gigi rolls through the door. Me oh my, what a meaning on the minds, he says, pushing the interview chair out of the way with his people mover and settling in. Gigi, can I ask what you're... As your CEO, EP, I'm stepping in. Little sashimi here has been quite a buzz surrounding him. Buzz we could almost certainly capitalize on. Not to mention this little matter of his infinite status. We have all kinds of quotas to fill in the department. Don't ask. Don't we hate these Rex? Gigi and Rexford look eyes and can see Rexford's wheels turn. He obviously wants to argue with Gigi, but get, get on with it then. With that, Rexford is out the door, and for better or for worse, you know this little exchange just at the tone of your la relationship with Rexford. Hey, went up by 13%. That's pretty good. Well, now that we know that that's out of the way, I have some questions for you, snuggle bum. Gigi says, slowly back towards you. Here's the breakdown. We're setting up about, two on, about um, um, our, our top 100 euros. So we're under the semifinals tonight based on the preliminary interviews. Everything. And I mean everything. We film is for up for grabs. All that footage we got today, it'll be put on our prepackaged episode. Before the live finals begin a few months from now. I'm rooting for you, sweetie, but you've got to make the cut. Especially since there is a room full of casting executives, producers, and networks executives behind the pretty pane of glass. So answer carefully, all right? Gigi takes a moment to make sure all the cameras in the room are in order. Then turns to you. I'm muting the freaking Discord. <laughs> so here's... I'm not even getting the notifications on my phone to see what the frick they're talking about. Alright. So, let's get started then, man. What's your goal for joining the Hero Project, eh? I want to serve as an infinite role model to keep less in public fears. I want to work with the best heroes to learn from them. I want the world to see just how powerful I've become as infinite power to make sure as my new heroic feats is possible. That's simple. To win. Um... I want to work with the best heroes and learn from them. I want the world to see just how powerful I've become. No, that's a bad. Uh, to make as many new heroic friends as possible. I want to work with the best heroes and learn from them. Gigi nods. 
seeming like your response, which is good, because your answer was... Completely honest, actually, yeah. I'm still new, and I could always learn stuff. You just hope that no matter what your intentions, your answers end up seeing end up seem seeming honest to the audience three hours like that's a long interview you stand in front of the bathroom mirror and throw water in your face Gigi grilled you for what felt like forever and you try to answer the questions in your intended role as much as possible then you had to undergo extensive psychological power and health evaluations now that you had a moment to process everything how do you feel about this experience it seems exciting Taking another deep breath, you go to leave the bathroom and your Emmy Chip pings with an Emmy message. Emmy Chip Jew appears before you, but something isn't right. She looks vacant. And as she began to relay the message, Jew speaks in a robotic, monotone voice. Sashimi. The hero project is rotten at its core. What are you going to do about it? Emmy Chip Jew then suddenly shorts out without any mention of where the Emmy message came from. Someone must have overridden you. Your Emmy Chip's personality coding to deliver that encrypted message, but what the slugger does it mean? Huh. You walk outside the bathroom, headed still spinning. Who sent you that Emmy message? And is it some kind of prank? Or could there be a conspiracy brewing under the surface of the Hero Project? Before you can answer any of these questions, you're suddenly assaulted by a herd of camera orbs, all spinning around, around a man who looks like Kendall come to life. You instantly recognize him as Colton Quick, host of America's number one daytime talk show, Quickies. A that's funny. Dunce, I have some news for you, Colton says, putting a hand on your shoulder. As the Hero Project's host, it's my job to let the contestants know when they've been eliminated. <sighs> Colton takes a beat to give the cameras his patented pounce, then turns back to you. It's also my job to tell contestants when they've made it into the top 100, he says, smiling so big you can see the winding strips of his molars. Welcome to the Hero Project, Dunce. Oh, okay. I thought I was going to get kicked out. I would have find my way back in like elimination rounds, but okay. That's cool. <laughs> See you all in the next chapter.